Here at MoneyWatch.com, the investment mantras are buy index funds, diversify your assets, and keep costs low. Today, we're joined by the economist who popularized those very ideas more than three decades ago, Burton Malkiel. He's currently a professor at Princeton University and author of a new book, The Elements of Investing. Professor Malkiel, thanks for joining us. My pleasure. Now, as I said, we are big believers in the philosophy of investing that you espouse. But it hasn't been easy lately. People who did everything right, bought index funds, diversified their assets, still got hammered. Buying index funds meant you were down 25%, uh, even now from the peak. People like Jeremy Grantham are saying that proves that index funds don't work. It's more of a religion than an investing strategy. What do you think? Well, first of all, the index funds during this last lost decade, as it's often called, outperformed the typical actively managed fund. So you're right, this has not been a great 10 years for investing in the stock market, but index funds consistently did better than about two thirds of active managers. So index funds uh, were not the problem. I also think that this last decade where the market ended up lower than it was at the beginning of the decade uh, actually proves some of these timeless lessons, namely diversification. I've always said you ought to have some bonds as well as stocks. Bonds did very well during the last decade. And a portfolio that was balanced between bonds and stocks did perfectly OK. You also want to be diversified internationally. You don't want to simply be in the United States. And in fact, international stocks, and in particular, Emerging market stocks did very well in the uh, first 10 years of the 2000s. So again, diversification helped you. So many people, though, have talked about all the different kinds of assets you need in a diversified portfolio. It seems to have gotten really complicated. You need to have commodities. You need to have real estate. What's your point of view about that? Well, my sense is, and this is one of the reasons why Charlie Ellis and I wrote this book, The Elements of Investing. I mean, both of us have written uh, this kind of stuff uh, before, but what there hasn't been in the market is something that with, within 100 pages, we didn't quite make it because the typeface is big, it's a little over 100 pages, but could you put all these lessons down in a very short book that you could access in an hour or two? And that's, I think, the difference uh, between this book uh, uh, and other books. And we've also had a principle that we call the KISS principle, keep it simple, sweetheart, that we don't think you need to be that complicated. We don't think you need to be in commodity funds. We don't think you need uh, to be uh, in hedge funds. We think that if you have index funds, including index funds that cover countries like Brazil and like Australia that are very rich in natural resources, you get some of the benefits that you would have if you were investing in commodities directly. So what we've tried to do is to suggest that with some very simple index funds, and we list them, we, you know, we tell the readers exactly where to go, uh, international, domestic, emerging market, bonds, that you can get a lot of these benefits that some people think is much too complicated because you've got to get into all these different asset classes. Okay, good. So thoroughly diversified in stocks, bonds, and cash is really all you need. I think so. You've talked a lot about China, and you surprised me by coming out in favor of China. I thought that violated some of your own principles, like nobody knows more than the market. Everyone's been talking about China. What makes you think at this point that China would still be undervalued? I didn't say that China was undervalued, and I'm not sure that China is undervalued. China, when you adjust it for purchasing power, probably is an economy that's about 13% of the world economy. Mm -hmm. I think it'll be bigger than Japan in a year. I think in 20 years it'll be bigger than the United States. And so what I'm saying is if you just indexed to the world economy, you will underweight China. And I don't want to underweight China because it's been the most rapidly growing economy in the world over the last 20 years. And I think it's going to continue to be the most rapidly growing major economy in the world. 
If there was one message that was the essential message of your book, what would it be? You know, you know I always like to say we should be very modest about what we know about markets. But the one thing I'm absolutely sure about is that the less money I pay to the purveyor of the investment product, the more there's going to be for me. And so low cost would be, you know, if there's one lesson to come out of it, look for low cost solutions. I'm very fond of quoting my good friend Jack Bogle who says, in the investment business, you get what you don't pay for. <laughs> thanks, Professor Malkiel. Let's leave it right there. Thank you very much. Enjoyed it. And thanks for watching.